Now let us see the relation between convolution and correlation functions. I will take a bit more time to explain this one because many students are confusing with this derivation. I will show you clearly in detail step by step here. Before that I want to recall you how I have taken the convolution operation of given two signals x1 of t and x2 of t means of course the relation it is first equation x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau d tau. This is what the relation for convolution of two given signals we have. How we have executed this integral if we recall the steps first what we have taken the steps here first step it is x1 of t and x2 of t what we have done we have shifted to x1 of tau and x2 of tau change of the time index from t to tau that is what we have done in the first step the procedure to perform the convolution what we have done t to tau we have changed the time index and then this is second function we have just shifted by some t tau plus t i have taken right so here shifting of the second signal and then this is second function after shifting what we have done it is reflection or folding with respect to tau here folding with respect to tau is the new time index here right? not with respect to t with respect to tau we are folding this second signal so that i will get that x2 of minus tau plus t or it is equal to x2 of t minus tau and then of course we are multiplying and integrating that is what we are doing in the integration convolution integration is it let us recall this procedure and then i have given one format for shifting and scaling of already scaled and shifted versions let us recall that format x of t if it is scaling we are writing that x of kt if it is shifting we are writing that some t plus r minus t naught if you want to shift the scaled version what we have to write we have taken the form k into t plus r minus t naught here similarly if you want to scale the shifted version we are writing like this kt plus r minus t naught both are not same that is why we need some precedence or precedence rule for the shifting and scaling operations anyhow this format we need to recall here observe the procedure and this format keep it in mind let us consider that the auto correlation function or cross correlation function first convolution this is the integration and cross correlation function i'll just write the equation here the cross correlation function between these two functions is represented with r 1 2 of tau and it is given by the integration minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of t x2 of t minus tau dt here or you can also represent this function with integral minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of t plus tau x2 of t dt this is what the correlation function for x1 and x2 in these two forms let us consider this one here fine first what i am considering is x1 of t convolution with x2 of minus t i am considering observe that what i am considering means the convolution x1 of t with x2 of minus t i am considering so first i will perform the convolution operation of these two and finally i will compare with this cross correlation function fine so x2 of minus t i have taken here so as per this convolution procedure let us perform the convolution of these two functions here first what should we do first step x1 of t x2 of minus t we have to change the time index from t to tau here what we have done t replace with tau here also t replace with tau same thing we will do now x1 of tau and x2 of t i am replacing with tau so we will get x2 of minus tau now fine in the second step what we have done tau should be shifted by plus t here shifting is just what we have done of course left shifting tau plus t we have done shifting of that signal but if you observe this function this is already scaled with minus 1 so x2 of minus tau meaning it is x2 of tau it is multiplied with some constant minus 1 that means already this is in this form with k value minus 1 now we have to shift that scaled version how much we have to shift tau should be replaced with tau plus t so this tau should be replaced with tau plus t so that after shifting of the second signal what i get x2 of minus of observe here k into 
t plus or minus t net. Like that, here also minus of tau plus t I have to take. Is it? So if it is x2 of minus tau plus t, this is nothing but x2 of minus tau and minus t. This is what the function after shifting of this reflected version. I mean x2 of minus tau after shifting we should get this term. So this is the step here. After that what we have to do? Fold with respect to tau. Folding with respect to tau meaning is tau you have to replace with minus tau. That is what? Folding with respect to tau. Now here also we have to fold with respect to tau. If you fold with respect to tau, tau you have to replace with minus tau so that this minus tau will become plus tau. We will get x2 of tau minus t. Is it? What I am getting? x2 of tau minus t, the second function. Finally, what we have to do? This function is multiplied with this function and then integrated. That is what the convolution procedure. So, this function should be multiplied with this function and then we have to integrate for this convolution. So, convolution, the integration, we have to take that multiplication of these two. That is x1 of tau, x2 of tau minus t. Observe that here in convolution integral, independent variable tau. So, that integration here it must be tau. If it is correlation function, this is independent variable t, dt here. But if it is convolution, d tau. Fine. So, this is convolution operation. So, d tau we are getting fine. So, here in this, what I am taking it is tau value I am replacing with a new time domain variable n. Let us consider that tau is replaced with n. So that what I will get x1 of n, x2 of n minus a small t and then tau I am replacing with n. So dn let us take. Fine. After this step I will take the t tending to tau. I have changed the t value with tau. So that this expression is minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of n, x2 of n minus tau dn. Fine. So, what is this function? Observe this is in this form. x1 of t, x2 of t minus tau dt. x1 of n, x2 of n minus tau dn. Simply, n is a time index like small t. So, that this is nothing but this function which is nothing but cross correlation function of x1 of t and x2 of t. This is r12 of tau the cross correlation function. So, what I have considered in the beginning that is convolution of these two functions. The convolution of x1 of t with x2 of minus t. So, this convolution finally it is becoming cross correlation whenever second signal is reflected here. So, simply we will take that R12 of R12 of tau, the cross correlation function we are representing as convolution of first signal with x2 of minus t provided here we have replaced t with tau now. So we have to write here with t is equal to tau. This is what the relation between cross correlation function and convolution function. We have to note one more point here. In case x2 of t second function if it is an even function what happens if it is an even function we can write x2 of minus t as x2 of plus t that is nothing but x1 of t convolution x2 of t then what happens means cross correlation becomes convolution when when one function is even function of course here we have taken the reflection of second function so that this equation we have verified if we consider this equation then x1 of t if it is even function then that cross correlation becomes convolution so, either one of the function, if one of x1 of t and x2 of t is an even function, then the cross correlation function is equal to, then cross correlation is same as convolution function. This is what the relation between convolution and co cross correlation function we need to observe.